So it's that magical time of year where everyone comes together to sit around and exchange stories of video game ads. That's right, it's the Game Awards time. It's coming up uh, in just a few days, and I thought we'd get together and give our predictions for what to expect, including what we think might win Game of the Year based on the uh, nominees that we have here. So we're joined by Derek Bender, John Cartwright, and Steve Bowling to go over all of this. And yeah, I guess let's just start off with real quick, what's your guys' general thoughts going into this year's Game of the Year awards? I mean, this sure is a Game of the Game Awards year. That's, uh, yeah. I mean, right now it just seems pretty typical. The big thing everybody's waiting for is, of course, the obvious thing we'll be talking about later. But as far as the actual nominees and field itself, is like, yeah, this is what I expected. Nothing too surprising or different. This is the Game Awards vibe that they've kept with for how many years now? Are you not stoked for potential world premieres, though, Derek? There are apparently over 10 of them this year, according to Jeff Keighley. Oh, goody. I mean, I, I mean, it's cool. <laughs> they could have some really cool things, but it, this is less than a, it's always felt like less of a award show to me than just a vehicle to get some new trailers out there. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what I said at the beginning. That's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. They have been getting better over the years, though, I feel. Like, last year was better than the year before, and um, the actual debuts themselves, um, themselves have been getting a lot better, too. Uh, like uh, after all, like last year we had Smash, and uh, before that we've had Breath of the Wild. So sometimes there are big reveals at the Game Awards, but there's also a lot of fluff. Like, you've got to sit through a lot to get to the good stuff. How are you, Steve? How are you feeling? Um, I usually just watch the <laughs> highlights. Just thoughts right there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm less of a watch the awards show kind of person, and more of a watch Twitter during the awards show kind of person. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. Yeah, I, I get the highlights. The show is pretty long usually, right? Like, what, three hours, I think, if not more? Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. It goes for a while. But hey, apparently they are increasingly popular. I believe last year's awards more than doubled the uh, the audience of the year before, reaching 26 million viewers in total. So at some point, 26 million people tuned in during the multi-hour uh, awards ceremony, and that's pretty impressive. Like, that's a lot of people watching this thing. It's a lot of people uh, <laughs> crap posting on, <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that they started giving away free games and stuff to people that were watching. Oh, did they? I don't remember Yeah, they, there was a whole thing about, like, if you watched it on Twitch... Uh, in the chat they were giving away free stuff like throughout the show mm. and I think last year was the first year they did that so so to me it just kind of told me people like free stuff <laughs> I think the awards are probably the part that people care about the least in general hey anyways on that note let's let's talk about one of these categories uh, specifically being who's going to win game of the year so the nominees are Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, Smash Brothers Ultimate, and The Outer Worlds so one of those is a little bit odd. I don't know if you caught it, but this is a game of the year for 2019. <laughs> and Smash Brothers is a 2018 game because it, of course, came out after the game of the year or the uh, the Game Awards show last year, making it eligible this year, uh, which is a little bit strange. So what do you guys think about this? What do you think is going to... Uh, wait, who do you think might take the crown this year? Should we start off with who is obviously not going to win? Um, Control is a great game. It's not going to win game of the year. Nor is The Outer Worlds. Yeah, I've... I've really didn't hear much about Control before this point, and I still don't, haven't taken the time to really look up about it, other than it's made by Remedy, which is cool. Outer Worlds, I've heard a lot of people really enjoy, but both just seem like also rands that are just not going to make it quite that far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're definitely great games, and they do deserve to win, but just yeah. like knowing the crowd and knowing the consensus, I don't think they will. I mean, I think you're kind of touching on maybe a larger point there, is I don't think this year's contenders are as strong, not in a gameplay sense, but just in a perception sense. Last year we had Spider-Man, God of War, and Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, among others. And this year, I don't feel like the, the, the candidates here are quite at that level, overall. Which is uh -huh. weird, because I feel like this has been a really strong year for games. I think it more has to do with how last year was exceptionally stacked with major AAA games, uh, whereas this year seems to be a little bit lower key. Right. Uh, also mm. with Smash, I feel like it's such a accomplishment in just a game. Like, there's no other game that's going to be this big, ever. Like it's just so huge. They've come. It's a culmination of the entire series. But because of that, it's kind of like people have. I, th I feel like I feel like people have sort of feel like they're done with Smash in a way. Like it, it, I don't think you can really be surprised by the game anymore. And for that reason, I don't think it's going to win Game of the Year. I feel like Smash is the wild card. My gut reaction is that it wouldn't win, partially for. For that reason, like the game, you know, for as good as it is, it's very much a known quantity. 
Um, but then my reaction to my own reaction is that, well, I was completely wrong last year, so maybe Smash Brothers stands a chance this year. Um, and I think, too, there are a few other factors here, because Smash Brothers did, uh, Ultimate specifically did cater to a lot of people that kind of skipped out over the Wii U version, because most people didn't have a Wii U. And it does feel like Ultimate has kind of like brought a resurgence back to the series that we hadn't seen since Brawl, which is basically a 10-year gap. And Ultimate also did something... Uh, two that that few other games have, and that's it stayed relevant over the entire year. Um, so mm -hmm. even though it technically came out last year, which by the way I kind of hate that a game from last year is eligible eligible for this year, <laughs> but that's beside yeah. the point. So for that reason, I'm actually gonna go. I'm actually gonna go against my gut reaction and say I think Smash Brothers might take it. I understand where you're coming from. I feel like Resident Evil 2 is gonna take it though. I feel like that that mm -hmm. made such it was such a different take for the series. Uh, Resident Evil has been trying to find itself for a while now. Like, with, with 5 and 6, it kind of went off the deep end with the action, uh, well, the action foray. And Resident Evil 7 went straight back to horror, but it also lo lost a little bit of what Resident Evil was, I feel. Whereas Resident Evil 2 went back to a classic, and it found Resident Evil again, and it's kind of the template for what the series is going to be in the future. And we're even seeing that with 3 being leaked, um, probably following off too. So, for that reason, I think Resident Evil 2 probably made such a big impact on, uh, not just on the crowd of the Game Awards, but I think probably more than most games this year. I, I need to uh, have, better, have a better understanding about how everything gets, because I know votes counter, uh, count, but I'm not sure how much of a It's a small they percentage, I think it's like 10% or something maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe it seems obvious or uh, things like that, because I'd love to see Smash Ultimate take it or Resident Evil 2 take it. I have a feeling Death Stranding's going to take it because uh, Keeley's been talking this up, and I know he has no part in the t voting process, but I feel like he has some pool in this whole thing. I mean, look how many nominations it got when it got very divisive reviews, mm -hmm. much more so than any other game on these lists. It got hugely divisive rev uh, reviews, yet it still got the most nominations out, out of any game. Mm -hmm, so yeah. to me, either the, it's like, okay, here's the bone, Kojima. We you know did that. Save face. You got a bunch of nominations, but we're not actually going to award you anything. Or it could be, hey, we really, we genuinely did like this game, and we're going to give it a bunch of rewards. I don't know. But I have a feeling it's going to be Death Stranding. It's such a tough situation because Death Stranding could legitimately win because it has the most votes, and it has nothing to do with Jeff Keighley. But that stigma is going to be there, just because he's been so attached to Death Stranding and its development. I find the Game Awards to be in a weird spot this year, because like you said earlier, Andre, there isn't really like a clear front runner mm -hmm. for Game of the Year. Uh, if you look back at 2018, God of War won, and that was a pretty obvious choice, I think. A lot of people were pointing to that for a Game of the Year nomination. It's funny you say that. I was rewatching our own discussion, and like none of us predicted it. Uh, you weren't on it, I don't think, but no one else <laughs> no. predicted it. No, no, I joined Game Explain just after the mm -hmm. Game Awards, so uh, like literally a couple days. For me, it's a toss-up between Smash and uh, Death Stranding, and uh, the reason why Smash is uh, it has, you know, one, it's still incredibly relevant in, in the competitive scene, right? It, it's an amazing game. That aside, I still, I think I'm a little bit more, uh, leaning a little bit more strongly towards Death Stranding. Uh, I think it's one of those two, and and I would be shocked if any of the other competitors uh, beat out either of those games. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think our overall predi or our general predictions right now are the only games that have a realistic chance of winning at all. It's between Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, and Smash Brothers Ultimate, to me at least. But hey, maybe they'll mm -hmm. surprise us. So yeah, I haven't heard people talk about Sekiro much since its release. I was definitely in the mindset for a while, but it just sort of dropped off. Mm -hmm. Right, it wasn't quite the Dark Souls or Bloodborne sort of consensus. It was good, it was definitely was good, but I think it was just a bit more niche than Dark Souls or Bloodborne. Which is kind of weird to say, but I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that said, I, to go against my own point about Death Stranding, I, I could see Smash Ultimate winning just because tying into another, an actual prediction for what they'll show at the Game Awards. I do think, I mean, I do think there's a lot of things stacked up against, uh, stacked against Smash Brothers. Like I said, mm -hmm. it's my gut reaction is a win and win. It came from the previous year. It's a fighting game, whereas they seem to cater more towards single player games for the game of the year. You know, epic based story adventures. Um, mm -hmm. And Smash is none of that. <laughs> World of Light does, definitely doesn't cut it. Uh, but it is a very, you know, it is like the ultimate form of Smash Brothers. And as Steve was saying, it's become the biggest selling fighting game of all time. Not that that really matters, but this will be kind of impact it had, and it's managed to remain relevant throughout the year. So we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll definitely see. I'm kind of curious just to see, you know, just to see if it has a chance of winning it. But if not, um, I think, I actually might think Resident Evil 2 could take it, if it's not Smash. 
Um, I think Death Stranding might be just a little bit too divisive. Uh, whereas Resident Evil 2 seemed to be pretty unanimous in his praise. Um, the biggest mm. thing against Resident Evil is that it came out not long after Smash, so... Mm. Right, and yeah, unlike Smash, I think recency bias definitely does kick, click in with Resident Evil because it, it doesn't carry itself throughout the year like Smash does. Mm -hmm. People are always thinking about Smash. Um, I've even said this myself with Resident Evil 2. I loved playing it for the review. But as the year's gone on, I haven't been thinking about it as much. Which is weird, because I maybe because I hadn't fully beaten it, but... You know, I, it still pops in my head throughout the year. Mm -hmm. As something like, man, I need to get back and play that because I really enjoyed what I played. You just wake up screaming as a, you imagine a zombie <laughs> biting your neck or something. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> We're covering something here about Derek. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, not quite our predictions yet, but there's one major thing I want to talk about before we get to our predictions, just in case it affects anything involving Nintendo. Uh, because one big difference this year compared to every other year, or pretty much every other year, is that there's going to be no Reggie at this year's Game Awards. Obviously, he retired from Nintendo. He's no longer involved in the game industry at all. What do we think about this? Uh, do you think this will affect Nintendo's, uh, how Nintendo presents themselves, or if they appear at all? Because we don't know for sure that Nintendo will be here. And if Nintendo is here in terms of game reveals, who will take Reggie's place? What do you think is going to happen here? My guess would be Bill. Overdog Bowser? Oh, maybe Doug. Actually, yeah, Doug Bowser. I forgot about Doug Bowser. <laughs> Poor Doug Bowser. <laughs> he doesn't have the E3. presence of Reggie yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's it's kind of hard to um, get that presence again. Mm -hmm. And Nintendo sort of moved away from um, having these people be the face of the company. I feel probably since um, a while to passed away, they've they've slowly started to have voiceover presenters rather than on stage presenters or at least on camera presenters mm -hmm. but Doug Bowser was at E3 um, with that little Bowser skit at the beginning so I think there's a chance he could sort of um, I guess replace Reggie but yeah I mean they could they could literally do announcements with no on stage presence yeah they absolutely could they do for a lot of other games so there's no reason why they couldn't for Nintendo it, it, I do think though by having that presence it does give a little bit more gravity to the announcements you know like it, it makes them stand out a little bit more in your mind i feel like than uh just having you know than, than them just rolling out another trailer you say that but then i well, maybe it does make it stick out in my your mind a bit, a bit because i always think back to the kind of disastrous reveal of cranky kong in tropical freeze <laughs> where that audience did not care whatsoever all right well we'll see um so let's go ahead and move on to our actual predictions uh you know, in which we give our wildcard expectations for what may or may not happen during the show. Uh, now, before we get to the specific ones, though, how many reveals are we expecting here, guys? Are you? Ex I think we typically get around two to three. So, what are you? What are you looking at this year? Do you think we'll we'll get potentially three or? Are you, you talking like Nintendo like, reveals? Because I don't remember there ever being three reveals for Nintendo. <laughs> right. Uh, there was one year where there were three. Oh, okay. It was. A yeah, while that's ago. not gonna be. It's not gonna be three. Uh, maybe two. I'm expecting one. Well, last year we had Marvel Ultimate Alliance and Joker. So I reckon, yeah, two minimum. But I, I reckon three. Uh, I'm I'm going with two. I'm I'm with Derek on this one. I don't think we see three. I, I would love to see three. I'm pretty sure we'll get two as well. That does seem to be like the the template they've lashed onto, but. You know, they can break that any time. All right. Well, I think the big prediction... I mean, I, I feel like one of our major predictions is, for some of us at least, is there's going to be a Smash character. Do we all agree? Do we yes. all think there's going to be a, sma a Smash reveal of the fifth DLC character? Yes. 95% yes. chance, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot of sense, right? Because uh, it's been one year since Smash came out. Uh, we know the fifth character has to be out by February, barring a delay. And the Game Awards reaches a huge audience. Uh, Jeff recently said, I, I think his favorite memory of the Game Awards was from last year, being the Joker reveal, where the audience went nuts. Because, as he was saying himself, that reveal could have really only worked at the Game Awards. Because had that trailer popped up in Nintendo Direct, you would instantly know it's for Smash Brothers. Um, whereas, because it was at uh, at a you know, third-party event, basically, no one knew quite what was going on. And the fact, when they flipped over that card and it showed the Smash insignia, uh, or the letter, I should say. That's when everyone lost their, you know, just that's when everyone went nuts. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I think they probably want to replicate that. And what a way to go out with, you know, introducing the fifth character on what seems to be one of the biggest platforms now for for gaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it needs to be a fake out though. They can't just be like, oh hey, you're in Smash. Like they they need, they need to lead you on and make you think it's not Smash. Are you referring to that Halo leak? I was. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I, there's, there's, there's this ridiculous Halo rumor going around where like, there's an audio clip where Cortana goes, Hey Chief, looks like you're in Smash, and then the Halo theme plays. The That's not how they're going to do it. Yeah. No way. 
That's <laughs> no, they're, they're way more creative than that. <laughs> so they'll find some way. They'll make us think it's going to be like if it's third party, it's going to be showing out that third party game and then switch it over. Or if first party, like oh, it's hey, this is Nintendo's thing. They're doing something for whatever. And oh wait, they're actually in Smash. <laughs> All right. So who do we think it could be? I'm going to go first because John always takes my picks. <laughs> or he gets to them before I do. Um, I don't think we shared this year. But uh, I'm going to go... So we, all, we recently had a discussion in which we gave uh, our own predictions on who could be uh, the fifth character a few weeks ago. Um, and I'm going to contradict myself a little bit. Because I threw out as my wild card, my pie-in-the-sky idea of Gino. And I thought it might happen at some point, but not now. I take that back. I think now might be the time. This is a huge audience. I think a lot of people want Gino, and I think this would be a great way to introduce him to, to the world. I, I do think it would get a lot of hype among the people that want him, which is quite a few, at least in the Western, I think, you know, in, in the States at least, which I would imagine is probably where most of the people are watching, but maybe I'm wrong on that. And as part of that, because I said before that I think it'll be a third party character, and Gino still counts. He's still technically a third party character belonging to Square. So, yeah, I think it might be his time. You're definitely right about the states because the Game Awards is on at like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. My stance has changed since our last discussion, and that's because I, I feel like at one point in development, the fifth character was the last character. We of course don't know that for sure. Like maybe when they when they started planning DLC, they they maybe maybe like season two was planned from the get go. But I'm going to assume it wasn't, and I'm going to assume that this final character was it. And Gino would be a very strong choice to choose from. Because we have K. Rule and Banjo Kazooie and Ridley in this roster. Mm -hmm. They were demanded ever since the beginning. So was Gino. So I, I feel like there's a strong chance. He's not my pick, but I feel like that would be a great last character for Ultimate. I think, I mean, you're kind of touching on something there. I think he would serve as a great advertisement for the next wave of DLC. It's like, hey, look what we ended on. Now imagine what could be coming next. Whereas, had they ended on, say, someone of like Terry's caliber, not, no judgment on the character itself. But I feel like he wouldn't garner the same level of excitement moving forward as, say, Gino would. Yeah, I, I, I agree, but also, I also feel like because it could have been the final character, it could just be someone they wanted to get in the roster without wanting to advertise the next DLC. Mm -hmm. So my pick kind of reflects that, and it's kind of a safe pick. I think it's going to be either Pyra and Mithra from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, because they wanted them to be in the um, in the main roster, but couldn't due to time constraints. Mm -hmm. So what better time to get them in than being the final slot of what was once the final character? Or, I reckon it might be Cosmos from Xeno's Saga. Like, two very similar picks. But the reason I think uh, Cosmos is because they've been using her a lot lately. She's a blade in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, she's in Project Cross Zone. And uh, I feel like she's a very iconic character for the Xenoblade, or even the Xeno universe. And she's also a Palo Namco character, who have been severely underrepresented, even though they made Smash Ultimate. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the developer, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I kind of agree with you with it being uh, Pyra and Mithra, just because they have the time. They mentioned specifically Xenoblade Chronicles 2. We know Sakurai is a Xenoblade fan, um, and it makes a, a certain amount of sense to just get Pyra and Mithra in there. And not only that, they uh, redesigned Mithra, for her yeah. spirit. Right, and that made it into Torna as well. Like that, that redesign from that Smash spirit was then used in the DLC for Xenoblade. Exactly. So it'd be... I mean, not the saying this is huge, groundbreaking evidence, but it would be weird if they if they did went to that effort only for a spirit. Which, I mean, they gotta keep the rating down. They gotta keep the rating down. So do you think they're going to... Uh, so you don't think they're going to they're gonna continue the third-party trend of characters now? I don't think I, they have to. I think they, they have to. Do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, otherwise, I'm sticking with what I said before with Ryu Hayabusa. Is that mm. your choice, then? Is that who you're expecting? I'm... I'm ex Yeah, I, I would say I'm, ex I'm expecting Ryu Hayabusa, because they could do a good fake-out for that. Uh, that that sort of thing. Otherwise, uh, my wild card is Pyra and Mithra. Alright, I'm glad I ended up last, because <laughs> my prediction uh, also ties into what I think the other... Nintendo reveal will be at the Game Awards. Oh wait, is this, is so, this another prediction spoiler? E yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So, Proceed. so last year Nintendo went in with something super huge and then something smaller that they wanted people to pay more attention to. So they put it on a big stage, right? Mm -hmm. Which was Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three. Because I don't think anybody was really that enthused about that game, or at least it wasn't talked about to the level Nintendo probably wanted it to be. 
Mm. I think they're going to adopt a similar strategy here. And I think the Smash character we're going to get is Travis Touchdown. And I think that they're going to tie that in with an extended trailer for No More Heroes 3 at the Game Awards. That's Hmm. a good prediction. Uh, Yeah, I mean, that's possible. They've had a strong relationship. It's a Switch. It's No More Heroes 3 is Switch exclusive. It comes out next year. We don't have a release date, but it's supposedly over 50% finished. And it, you know, it just seems weird that that Nintendo would be uh, helping them out so much with this game, and we wouldn't have. Uh, we we don't know hardly anything about it yet, other than that it's coming. But yet it was revealed at E3, so I, I could see them wanting to get more people, especially after uh, Travis Strikes Again kind of flopped. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I I hold firm that I want tra- Travis and Smash so much <laughs> that I'm going to predict that he'll be there. He'd be a cool character. I hope that's true. For, I, I hope that's right. Just so you're, so you can be as happy as I was for Banjo. <laughs> I, I don't know if Travis has the has the reach for the Game Awards. Um, I feel like he'd be more of a second wave character of anything. Very possibly. I just want it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a great character to choose. I, I don't know if I necessarily um, think he will be even in the second wave. <laughs> I think yeah. he'd be a great character. He'd be really fun. But I, I, I just don't know if he's. If he's up there. I mean, there are Zelda shirts in Travis Strikes Again, so... Yeah, yeah but that's they, a shirt. They clearly like each other as developers, so... It's mm. true. The only thing predictable is it's unpredictable, so I, I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and move on, then. Uh, actually, Steve, I want to talk a little bit more about your No More Heroes prediction. Like, what, how would we feel if they actually did reveal, or more, or rather not reveal, but more, but showcase the third one at the Game Awards? Because it does seem like that's possible, but I feel like that kind of falls into like uh, the spectrum of, say, Bayonetta, which was also revealed a couple years ago. Yeah, I feel like it's a really good choice for a venue like the Game Awards. They tend to skew more towards the uh, more towards mature titles, mm-hmm. or you know, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah, like yeah, more totally. violent kind of action type games, uh, like M games. Yeah, mm-hmm. rated M. <laughs> so, I mean, Travis seems like the perfect kind of character for the Game Awards. Uh, I could see them making, like, a trailer where he's very self-referential, you know, or fourth wall breaking about where he's at and what's going on. I mean, in a way, Persona did that even, right? With, mm-hmm. you know, mentioning that they were at the Game Awards in, their, in yeah. the Joker trailer. So, I feel like uh, you could do a lot with the character and the brand of humor that No More Heroes employs. Uh at at us on that stage so i would love to just you know i think that no more heroes uh at least back when it came out on the wii right like it's hard to believe it's that old but um no more heroes one and two were pretty well received they were they had good reputations i think the only thing that held travis strikes again back is that people wanted a proper no more heroes instead of what they got Mm -hmm. uh so i could definitely see a trailer going over very well with that audience i think that would be really cool I think the only way to make a proper impact with No More Heroes 3, though, is to pull a Bayonetta 3 Ooh, and also announce No More Heroes 1 and 2. Yeah, that would be amazing. I mean, and I think it was when we interviewed Suda51, uh, he said he was very interested in bringing it over and was trying to talk to Nintendo about a possible uh, deal to get No More Heroes 1 and 2 onto the Switch. I think that's a really good idea. is to Because, it, as you guys said, Travis does fit with um, Game Awards. It's not huge, so it's, it won't be, it's, you know, it's, I'd put that at Ultimate Alliance level. Yeah, Marvel Ultimate Alliance is weird, because Marvel is a huge brand. But the game itself isn't so much, so... Yeah, exactly. So right. I, I put it around there. Um, I think that works, but yeah, putting one and two on the Switch like next year, coming like February, yeah, that'll do well. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next predictions. Uh, John, what do you have for us? Right, well, I need some visual aids for this one. So, guys, <laughs> I'm going to share with you my screen. Oh, dear. So let me just dive into this. <laughs> oh, no. So. What is Kitty Kong doing there, John? On <laughs> no, don't look at that! No! <laughs> <laughs> So here is my screen for you all. Can you all see? Uh, yes. Yes. Cool. I, I, see, I see someone this. hiding Kitty Kong. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at that. Please don't look at that. <laughs> <laughs> right, can you guys see my PowerPoint presentation? Oh god, you have a PowerPoint yes. presentation, yes. <laughs> you have way too much time on your <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's dive into this. So, 
The Game Awards, John's Predictions. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> so comics, first, yeah. before we dive oh into god. my predictions, let's go over the history of the Game Awards. So this is Jeff Keighley over here. What did we got ourselves into? Jeff Keighley, this is what he likes. He loves neutral backgrounds and he oh, loves video no. games. And let's go over all the reveals Nintendo have ever done at the Game Awards. So to start off with, this isn't even the Game Awards. This is VGX. Reggie came along and said, Jeff, I got something for you. Jeff said, oh man, Nintendo, we're going to reveal something. What could it be? It was Cranky Gone. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that was G VGX9 uh, Game Awards. Wow. Right. And then after that, they brought Breath of the Wild. Whoa, that's kind of a bit of a step up from Cranky Gone. And Miyamoto doesn't really look like, he doesn't look like he knows he's there, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> following that, there was nothing. It was just a, uh, a remembering Satoru Iwata, which was a touching moment. After that, though, more Breath of the Wild. They keep bringing this game to the Game Awards. And you know what? <laughs> They brought it the following year, too, with the Champions Ballad and also Bayonetta 3. After that, though, no Breath of the Wild. There was Joker <laughs> Revealed and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. So, what is all this? Escalation. <laughs> I think there's going to be a Nintendo Direct at the Game Awards. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I it's reckon... not even Game Awards anymore. It's just Nintendo Direct. Genius. I reckon there's going to be three announcement in announcements in this Nintendo Direct because people watching the Game Awards are true gamers and they want a Nintendo Direct. So, there's going to be three showcases. One of them is Breath of the Wild 2. Remember this game? No. So, let's, let's break it down. I know, I know what you think. Let's break it down. Breath of the Wild was announced in 2014. It has appeared in 2014, 2016, and 2017 at the Game Awards. That is three out of five possible appearances, and Link is also in the Joker trailer, so let's call it four out of five. So, I reckon, for that reason alone, they are going to bring Breath of the Wild 2, because that's such a legacy with the Game Awards. And, not only are they going to bring it, but Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be confirmed for holiday 2020. Because right now, the only 2020 games are Animal Crossing and Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. So I reckon they're going to just try and make a stance for how how high the standards of 2020 are going to be by showing a game that's so synonymous with the Game Awards. So that's my first prediction, Breath of the Wild 2. Oh my god. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't argue with that logic because that was basically my logic for my prediction I was going to give, John, but your presentation was stellar. <laughs> So, um, yeah, no, I think I think now might be the time. Like we found out about this game at E3, and they want to keep momentum. The TGA is the perfect way of doing it. And as you said yourself, uh, they they've shown it off multiple times at Breath of the, or at the Game Awards before. But to to put a bullet point on that, the first time we saw Breath of the Wild actually being playable, actual in-game gameplay was at the Game Awards, and we still haven't seen that for Breath of the Wild 2. So this seems like a perfect way of reintroducing it to the world, show us how this game actually plays, whether through like a gameplay trailer or maybe they'll do something more casual like we saw with Miyamoto there. I just hope we don't have to see, you know, I just hope the TV's not 50 feet away this time like it was last time. <laughs> but I agree, I think we will see Breath of the Wild 2 here. I reckon it's further along than people think. Um, they're obviously building it off Breath of the Wild 1, so just having that groundwork is ne that's that's going to speed up development way more than building it from the ground up. Um, so yeah, I reckon not only is it coming really soon, but I reckon it's ready to show. Uh, actually, I'm going to clarify one thing. I think it will get announced for 2020, and then and then I think it'll get delayed to 2021. <laughs> I mean, that's that, yeah, that's pretty fair of Zelda. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I I could see it. I mean, you, you make a convincing argu argument, John. I mean, I'm convinced by any PowerPoint, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they could show us something pretty short, but just have like a tease of something within Breath of the Wild 2. Not even give it a release date, but just tease something insignificant about it. Or maybe like a small part of something bigger and people would go, well, wild. So I'm not denying this one. This makes sense. I'm torn. Like I, I mean, the in, the evidence is clearly incontrovertible, John. But <laughs> um, I feel like Breath of the Wild Two is too early to show. I, I I just don't believe it being a 2020 game. But then Andre mentioned like, oh, they'll they'll show it and they'll say it's going to come out and then it won't. <laughs> and that I firmly believe. <laughs> so uh, let's not forget that I I want to say the initial Breath of the Wild release window was what 2015 yeah 2015 or yeah. something like yeah it's like right after zelda 64 but <laughs> um so so yeah you know uh thinking about the fact that nintendo can and does love to uh publish release windows for zelda then slowly inch them back over time i could definitely see this happening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i feel like that they have a very different stance on how they release games now that most of their announcement to release periods are very short 
with the exception of Metroid Prime 4 which restarted development. But um, Breath of the Wild for Wii U, I feel like was announced so early because they had to. Like there was, there was no, they had to have like some glimmer of hope for the future of Wii U. Whereas Switch doesn't need that, and I think announcing it at E3 last year just kind of shows like, I, I feel like it's going to come sooner than people think. They should just shadow drop it. That's, that's yeah, a right now. <laughs> oh, All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in here then because I think my next prediction, um, it, it's a, it's more of an unprediction actually, <laughs> uh, because it stands in direct conflict with Breath of the Wild. If if I think Breath of the Wild Two is going to be at the Game Awards, then I think that also means Metroid Prime Four won't be. Oh, it's not ready yet. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, go, it started I'll, development this year. No way is it ready. Well, yeah. th they announced it this year. It could have started development before. I think when Nintendo has to break their usual silence to tell you that the game was <laughs> so screwed up they had to start over, uh, that's a game you're not going to see for at least a couple years after that, <laughs> right. after that video. So I, I don't expect to see Metroid Prime 4. Retro were hiring for some pretty key positions, um, well, like just a few months ago. So, I mean... Hiring for a game doesn't necessarily mean it's far away. They could be hiring for, like, finishing up the work, but I don't think so. I think they're really early still. You know what's really funny mm. is I was listening to our last year's predictions, and we were all on the Metro Prime 4 train. This is before, <laughs> before we knew about its development hell process. Yeah, but exactly. It's, it's hilarious how things have changed. <laughs> but how, nut, how nuts would it be if we actually did get a trailer? Because it's not impossible. I think it's extremely unlikely, as I just laid out, but it's not impossible, so... Yeah. It'd be cool. I'd be interested. It's not happening. <laughs> this links in a little bit to my next PowerPoint slide. Okay, yeah, go for it. Yeah. All right, All right let's, let's keep going with the presentation then. So, game number two, <laughs> Metro Prime Trilogy. Ah. I reckon... Oh, they, uh, let's go back. I reckon it's going to release in February of 2020. I reckon they've had this finished for a while. I think they, they, I think they plan to release it near Metro Prime 4. When Prime 4 just sort of slipped away, they went, no, no, hold it back. There's no point releasing it now if Prime 4 is not going to release for like another couple of years. But I reckon because Prime 4 is now back on track, it's time to release the trilogy. And I also reckon that Prime 4, there's going to be no, no notice of Prime 4. It's not even going to be at the event. They'll barely even mention the word Prime 4. I like the dry it's quote there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, I think Prime Trilogy is going to be coming really soon. Yeah, you, now this kind of flies in contrast to the idea of... Uh, no More Heroes collection in February. Do you think both would happen, or do you think they'd uh, go for Metroid Prime Trilogy first? Um, I reckon... Pro well, it's, it's difficult to say. I reckon Prime Trilogy has the chance of releasing later, just to fit with Prime 4's schedule. Um, whereas No More Heroes... No More Heroes, I guess, can release whenever, because No More Heroes 3 is probably further along. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I had to guess between the two, I'd probably give it to No More Heroes, even if I think Prime Trilogy is the more obvious release. God, I hope you're right. I would love to see the trilogy, which is something, again, we were predicting last year. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. One of these years we'll get it right. <laughs> yeah, right. My concern is that I feel like it's something they would probably want to release a little bit closer to Metro Prime 4 itself. It's not... It's, they don't have to. Uh, but I feel like we all agree Metro Prime 4 is still a little ways out at the least, and by a little ways I mean a lot of way, a lot of ways. Uh -huh. uh, so I wonder if it's too soon, but hey, I'd be happy to be it, wrong, and it would be a good way to start building momentum at least toward toward the the fourth one. It uh, would. Counterpoint. Um, <laughs> Boy, that uh, Bayonetta 1 and 2 release that we got sure built, built to Bayonetta 3. <laughs> I mean, that, that is true. <laughs> I, I suppose also Metroid is bigger than just Prime. Um, the, there was a big hint towards Metroid 5. or Yeah, Metroid, Metroid oh, 4, Metroid 5? Don't play with my heart, John. <laughs> It'd be Metroid 5, because Fusion is 4. Right, exactly. So, I reckon they could release Prime Trilogy now and also carry the momentum with Metroid 5. Or release Metroid 5 now and carry the momentum with Prime Trilogy. I'm, I'm going to shut this down now. I don't think Metroid, <laughs> Metroid 5 is coming. Ugh. Don't know. I can't do, you, do it. Do you really not think it's coming? I mean, Samus Returns was pretty clear about about leaving the window open for more. It was. It, it definitely was. But I just don't think right now. I think that's more of an. Well, maybe you're not an E3 thing. I, I think. I think it could happen now. Uh, you know, we like to look, think of Metroid as like one of Nintendo's top properties, and it is from quality state. It is. It is definitely up there. But it's always. 
the sales numbers have never really reflected that, so I'm not sure if like Game Awards or E3 is a better showcase for it. I guess e- uh, Game Awards is a slight is smaller, so I guess it would make sense to so show something Metroid related. But I don't know if it'll get people yeah hyped in the same way. You know, I kind of agree with Derek. I don't know if the trilogy, unless it's like a much bigger revamp than what we may be expecting, I don't know the Game Awards are the best place for it, unless it's paired <laughs> with another announcement. The Super Metroid remake that's been rumored. Ooh. Oh, so you're going Me- Super Metroid rather than Metroid 5. Interesting. Uh, it right. would have to look good. It would have to look so good, otherwise you can't justify it. And Mercury Steam, they can make a good-looking game. Oh, it, it's, it's such a hard game to advertise, because Super Metroid is so perfect. But I feel like later Metroid games did improve upon some things. Yeah. Um, but I, it's just like, it's such a hard gem to touch, because it is one of the best games ever. I feel like we'd hear more about a Super Metroid remake. I want it. <laughs> it sounds incredible. Um, I would be incredibly thrilled if something like that showed up, but I just don't think the Game Awards is like the right venue for for something like Super Metroid. It just, in the same way that I think uh, a No More Heroes game would resonate really well with their audience, I, I think the opposite of Super Metroid. I, it's a fantastic game and everyone should absolutely love it, but I... I just don't think it would go over well with that audience for some reason. Hmm. I mean, I kind of had the same feeling when Andre was talking about Gino. <laughs> yeah, I, I true. Don't, I don't know if the Game Awards care about Gino. <laughs> make them care about Gino. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Make them care about Metroid, so yeah. we'll see. I feel like none of us actually know what the Game Awards audience is. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> I, I put it in my slide. It's these guys. Let's find them. Uh, <laughs> the gamers. It's the gamers. Oh, yeah. There you go. All Perfect. right, John. Well, do we want do we want you to continue to your third prediction then? Well, my third prediction was is something we've covered already. It's Cosmos. Oh, Cosmos. Yeah. Yeah. So unless we want to like throw in something else that's not in my slide, but I've, I did elaborate a bit more. So a Cosmos is um, going to be revealed like this. Basically, it's going to look like a Xenosaga game. It's going to look like Xenosaga <laughs> Trilogy is coming to Switch. It's going to look just like gameplay. Uh-huh. Everyone's going to be like, "Whoa, they're bringing the Xenosaga Trilogy to Switch!" And then the trailer keeps going on. It's actually Smash, <laughs> and everyone's like, "Well, wait, is it not coming to Switch?" And there's no sign of Zenith Saga ever coming. To Switch. <laughs> and by everybody, he means Derek twice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I love how reactive I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve, what do you have for us? What, what kind of predictions do you have? My broad prediction is that we're getting a Smash character and some smaller game they want to generate hype for. Right. Uh, you know, I, I tempted because No More Heroes 3 is really the only 2020 game I know of that doesn't have a ton of hype around it, you know, that Nintendo would maybe want to put in front of people. Uh, barring No More Heroes 3, I think it's another small scale IP that, that they're just going to try to generate hype for. Uh, although now I'm kind of getting on the Breath of the Wild 2 train here, <laughs> just because... One of us. Yeah, exactly. I... I the more I think about it, we've had more game awards with Breath of the Wild than not. <laughs> exactly. So, so you know, I'm I'm gonna go all in on that. I'm gonna all say right. Breath of the Wild two will be shown in some form at the game awards. Okay. I think that's that's my main takeaway from this discussion. I mean, I'm kind of tapped because I think the ones we've covered are definitely the most likely. I can't think of any wild predictions other than you know no Bayonetta 3 again I well don't right that. so wh- why do we think that because it was shown off two years ago at the Game Awards we've heard literally nothing about us since beyond that you know development is still going so why do we think it won't appear this year I think it's just because it has been so quiet. I just, uh, I think it's just something. It's got to resurface sometime. <laughs> right? yeah, well, exactly. I mean, I, 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 for some reason, I feel a, a direct more because I, what was the reaction to Bayonetta? I, I mean, people were excited for Bayonetta three, but not like blowing people away. So I guess it would fit that smaller aspect. So it could do it, but I just have this it's, gut feeling that no. <laughs> it's the kind of game where the reveal is more impactful than the actual game itself. I, I mm-hmm. feel like if you show gameplay, it's not going to have the same reaction as when you reveal Bayonetta three. I think it's for that. I think it's for that reason that we won't see it at the Game Awards. They've already they've already kind of shot their load regarding Bayonetta three at the Game Awards. It's kind of redundant to do it again when they could. It may be better served in a different venue like Nintendo Direct or E three or something. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I I, I think we we play it pr- pretty safe with games that we already know about, like Breath of the Wild two. Do you think they would actually have like a brand new reveal that we've never seen before? Uh, and I, I'm kind of alluding to now. Do you think that this could be the place where they announce Super Mario Odyssey 2? God, that'd be amazing. God, that would be amazing. The reason I don't think so is because Nintendo has never done it before. That I can remember. Uh, in terms of first party developed 
games. They have not had a single world premiere, to my memory, uh, internally developed, revealed at the Game Awards for the first time. That's true. But yeah. I suppose there's, there's always a first, though. There's always a chance That's that That's true. There's always a chance they yeah. can go back on that, so... I would love it. That would... I would lose... So I would lose it if they show up Mario Odyssey 2. Or whatever yeah. the next Mario is. <laughs> it would be amazing as well if they just try and trick us. They have some some kingdom that looks like nothing we've ever seen before. It looks like 3D land. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be great. Like when, when they first revealed Odyssey, it was just this... It, we saw like this New York street, and then Mario shows up out of nowhere. I want that kind yeah. of thing again. I want that kind of reaction. And, and honestly, it lends itself perfectly to it. They can go, they can go wild with these environments, and it all makes sense because nothing makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, th I think it's it's very normal to go into 2020 not knowing the lineup. Nintendo always do that. Like we get a direct yeah. at the start of the year showing us the 2020 lineup. That said, though, the Game Awards is just such a good venue to just debut like your biggest game yeah. of that year. Mm -hmm. Get people excited for the following year. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, okay. I, I did. Okay. Here's my wild prediction. I guess and maybe not so wild, but we already talked about Breath of the Wild. Well, that, it's kind of related to that uh, with <laughs> with Zelda. Uh, like, okay, little snippet of Breath of the Wild to, you know, very minor, maybe thirty seconds worth, if that. Nothing, you know, too crazy, but still the hint to get people excited. But then roll that over to um, a port of a Zelda game. Now take your pick. It could be Wind Waker, it could be Twilight Princess, it could be Ocarina or Majora's Mask in HD. I think any of those would get people really excited. The only way I see that working, which it could given how on board the train we are, but I think it only works as being paired with Breath of the Wild yeah. 2. They won't announce it by themselves. No, no, not yeah, by if they show Breath of the Wild 2, then they could they could definitely announce uh, ports of those, just like they did with you know Bayonetta and uh, I think something else before, maybe. Mm. I think ports of those games... is. is make a lot of sense. People want to get, get those two HD uh, ports off the Wii U, onto the Switch, get them off the 3DS, onto the Switch. They'll sell gangbusters. I don't even think you have to do that much to Ocarina and Majora. It's just, you know, get the uh, get them a little clearer looking and still essentially look the same and people will be pretty happy and probably pick them up. You know what get people excited? Skyward Sword HD. That could be it too. I'd be happy with that. That would yeah. be bigger. Because be Wind Wake HD and Twilight Princess HD are ports of ports, and they're great games, and it'd be great to have them on Switch. But they'd be worse on Switch too, without the gamepad. Right, <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. But yeah, Skyward Sword would just be such a bigger impact. I feel you, you've got to kind of, I guess, almost remake the game in some instances because it was made for Wii Remote Control, and you could you could literally just have it docked only with Joy-Con. But uh, that just kind of goes against the Switch. Mario Party did that too, though. Yeah, so so I'm not sure it. it's... <laughs> 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 they don't care. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if they... I don't know. I mean, it's, they'd have to really redevelop that game because it was so... Having the motion controls was integral to the experience. So if you take those away, is it even the same game? <laughs> no. Not uh, really, but some people might yeah. like that. So who knows? You'd lose, you'd lose so much, in my opinion. I feel like the game just sort of... It, I think the, the game hinges on the motion controls, in my opinion. If you take them away, right. I think you're going to have a much worse game. I could almost see it as an option, like you know how Uncharted, uh, Uncharted Four had the like the easiest difficulty setting in which you basically auto target enemies. Mm -hmm. That could be maybe how Skyward Sword works. It's like, hey, if you want to play with a conventional controller, that's fine. It's gonna be a little bit easier if it's Link with its automatic to do whatever you need him to do in that moment in terms of sword controls. And I could see that maybe working, you know, like if you don't want to mess with the motion controls or if you're just you know if you just want an easier experience, maybe the game will kind of like autopilot yourself through those segments at least. And that would actually could have a fair amount of appeal, much like how. Uh, you know, you have the auto steering and Mario Kart and auto accelerate. I mean, mm -hmm. the option's always yeah. good. All right, well, we've, we've been talking a fair amount about 2020 games, or rather, what Nintendo could do to excite us for 2020. There's one we've been overlooking, though Animal Crossing. That's, I think, the one 2020 game we know for sure is coming out, uh, let alone in the early part of the year. Is there a chance that could be shown off at the Game Awards? No. <laughs> no. Because it's kind of the wrong crowd. It is completely yeah. the wrong crowd. I'm looking at uh, John's example of, uh, of you know the typical Game Awards gamer. <laughs> I, mean, I don't see him playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't have much more to say than that. Uh, it could do. It, it is. It is without a doubt their biggest game they've revealed. It could be bigger than Breath of the Wild too. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, but I, I just don't know if they need to show it off or if they. That game is too relaxing for the for intense. Yeah. Let's, like, look how crazy this is. Look how cool this is. Go for it. You don't want to get that out of Animal Crossing. Yeah, that's kind of my thought too. Unless like, there's some crazy mode we don't know about, uh, I don't see it really working at the Game Awards <laughs> and either. FPS where you run from Nook. That'd be amazing. Like, it's, <laughs> no, it's just Resident Evil Two, but it's Nook coming after uh. you collecting debt. 
<laughs> you know, I would actually love to see that game. <laughs> that sounds incredible. I do have one idea, though, for a game. Okay. And this isn't strictly from Nintendo. This is actually from Microsoft. So, Microsoft have had a bit of an unprecedented relationship with Nintendo lately, with Ori and the Blind Forest, and Cuphead as well. Uh, I reckon there's more coming. I mean, they, they've put Ori on Switch with, with Xbox Live integration. Well, that, that, they wouldn't do that just for one game. <laughs> I reckon there's definitely more Microsoft stuff coming. And Halo Reach just launched on PC. I reckon that there is a chance that Halo Reach could come to Switch. Just Halo Reach. Well, I reckon the Master Chief Collection in, in and of itself will eventually, well, it could eventually come. But just because Halo Reach is just on PC at the moment, I think they might mirror that. Could you imagine that? Like, this might, I mean, if this were to happen, which we've, we've discussed before, we all think it's possible... This would be probably perhaps perhaps the best venue for it. It's a neutral. It's a neutral stage. It's not Microsoft stage. It's not Nintendo stage. It's the gaming stage. True. So it kind of makes a lot of sense to to show it off here if it's to be if it's to be a thing. God, Halo on Switch would just oh, <laughs> that'd be insane. That That'd be people so would lose great. their minds. It really yeah, would. It would. <laughs> That will make a huge splash. It's amazing that we can even humor this as a possibility because it, it feels like it could happen. And it makes, I mean, the timing does kind of make sense for Microsoft, too, because their next Xbox is coming out next year, and I forget, do we know if Halo is next year, too, for sure? Halo's a launch um, title. Halo yeah, yeah, there we go. So if so, you can get those Nintendo gamers to pick up a, you know, if they have a home console, there you go, there's the uh, Scarlet. Yeah. All right, guys, any final predictions for Nintendo in regards to the Game Awards? I don't know. I think, I, I don't know what kind of other uh, announcements they could make, but I, I think that's, I think we got a pretty solid list. Yeah, we can't expect too much. Uh, I think I think we kind of all have a consensus on Breath of the Wild 2, though, surprisingly, after all this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we had a consensus on Metro Prime 4 last year. <laughs> That's true. So, <laughs> yeah, our on. consensus That's means away. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, how about real quick, uh, just to broaden it a little bit, uh, what are you expecting in terms of other uh, of the other companies? Are you expecting to see Halo Infinite here, more Final Fantasy VII Remake? Like, what are you kind of hoping for from the others? Um, we've got a state of play coming up. And uh, Jeff has sort of said that Resident Evil 3 isn't going to be in the Game Awards. So I think Resident Evil 3 is going to be in State of Play rather than the Game Awards. That said, though, Final Fantasy 7, yeah, I reckon that's going to be in. I can see them going for Final Fantasy 7. What do you think about Project Resistance instead? Ooh. Um, since that's more multiplayer based, John. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Um, right now, I'm not very excited for that game, and I think they need a. Uh, just a, a way to excite people. So yeah, maybe this is a good venue for that. I, we're on the cusp of a new console generation, so I don't think we're going to see much. Uh, where, you know, PlayStation Four and Xbox One are, are technically winding down at this point. But what I would expect to see an extended look at Cyberpunk. Oh sure. Uh, Twenty seventy seven. Oh, yeah. I feel like uh, it hasn't actually been played by anyone outside of CD Projekt Red yet. It's coming out pretty dang soon. And it, there's a ton of hype already around. It comes out in April, so I, I fully expect that we'll see like an extended, like an like extended gameplay of the game, like a gameplay trailer at the Game Awards. Mm -hmm. mm. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Uh, this is going to be a big game next year. It's coming out in was it April or uh, yeah, yeah, April sixteenth. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's definitely a safe bet. I reckon Sony might reveal Spider Man too. I think Spider-Man wow. was huge. They are undoubtedly working on a sequel, uh, and it's been a little while now. I reckon, I reckon it's going to be a PS5 launch title. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I, they might say that for like when they fully reveal the PS5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. But I mean, what, that'd be cool. Though. We don't really know what the PS5. We don't really know what next gen's going to be. Next gen might even just be an extension of the current gen. Like maybe, maybe Spider-Man 2 will come to PS4 and PS5. And uh, like I don't know, it'd be like backwards compatible and it, and it, and like enhanced or something. But yeah, I think Spider-Man Two is a no-brainer, um, and this would be a good place to announce it. Yeah, hmm. I, I would be yeah. thrilled. Yeah, that'd to be see cool. That would, get, that would definitely get the hype going. Like that, that should get the ball rolling on PS5. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, where's our hype levels at? How excited are you guys right now for this year's game of the game uh, for this year's Game Awards? Not just for Nintendo, but for everyone. What, what's your hype level from one to ten, John? Uh, in the context of the Game Awards, eight. In the context of just general announcements, like five. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> for the for the Game Awards, uh, six, seven. Um, but for the you know potential Smash reveal, I put that around a eight. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hype um, the Smash reveal for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't want to overhype myself because it might not happen. You don't know. <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say I'm at about a 7 for reveals in general. 
uh, you know, accounting for third party stuff as well, or not third party, but like Sony, Microsoft, their stuff as well. But uh, the Game Awards themselves, I'm at like a three. I do not enjoy <laughs> watching them. <laughs> I think it is just an unenjoyable hours long commercial. Oh poor Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Jeff. I uh, I pretty much echo those thoughts, Steve. I'm at like a three for the game awards and maybe like a eight for the announcements. So what what's that put me at? Like somewhere around five, five? Yeah. maybe split the difference. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, I'm also, I'm, and for as much as I want to see Breath of the Wild 2, I'm also terrified because that's going to mean a lot of work after. Oh, God. So, That'd be awful. Yeah. We'll see. All right. I think we're about done here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Our predictions for the 2019 uh, Game Awards. And of course, stay tuned for tons more coverage on the Game Awards coming up in just a few days. All right. We'll catch you later. Bye. <laughs>